What's going on YouTube? It's your homie guy about to bring y'all a new video today on It's On You channel. And today this video is about a few gun types that I think you should consider adding to your gun safe or your collection. And these guns, I feel like it should be, uh, should be the first few guns that you get before you start getting the, the nice, uh, sexy guns and the things you just want just to have safe queens or whatnot, you know, or just gradually add it into that, but just something to think about, you know what I mean? And it's just the gun types or whatever and their, uh, their use or whatnot. But before I get to it, you know, I got to do my EDC dump. So we're going to start off with my watch and this is the Winfield MD timer. And it also have a blue shark NATO strap on it. All right. I'm going to go to my left side, which is my keys. We have a cycle five by the key lane. Also y'all already know, Old light keychain light on here. My left pocket, we have my Xpare mag, which is held by a Neo mag. All right. Also in my front left pocket, we have my wallet. It's a minimalist wallet made by Recycle Firefighter. All right. And my EDC light of choice is the Cloud Defensive MCH. This is the EDC head. All right. Also in my left pocket, back pocket, we have my Soft T tourniquet with a sharpie all right and we have my brighton and rain notepad all right would have been in my back right pocket is my phone but i'm recording from it it's the iphone 14 pro then we're going to go to the edc blade of choice and it is the bench made this is the 0940 and i also have an upgraded deep pocket carry clip from their website as well only 10 bucks go check it out all right, front right pocket, we have a few things. And first off, we have my Apple AirPod Pros in a hype case. We have my pen, which is a Fisher Space Pen Bullet. All right, and also in the front pocket, we have the chapstick. Then we're going to go to the gun. And this is the CZ PO1. This is the Omega model. We also have the True Glow Night Sights up top. We have the Surefire X300, and we have some thin matrix grip grips all black g10 grips uh made by lock grip on here and it is riding in a alex and ryan design holster or appendix holster care setup and my edc belt is a blue alpha edc gear all right now before we get to it i'm going to have a few guns that pretty much are the same so they're in the same category but i'm just giving you different uh options i would say um but each one is pretty much, uh, I, I feel like that I, I would consider them being in the same category. So we're going to start off with pistols first. Uh, I have two pistols. One is hammer fire and one is uh, striker fire. It, matter, it doesn't matter which, whether you choose to go with striker fire or hammer fire, but I'm just showing you two different things. Now they are clear, as you can see, no, no mag in it. Now the first one is the CZ. PO1. This is the Omega version. I also have some, uh, I have the uh, night vision, night sights on here. And this is a compact one. And that's why I chose the two different ones to show you hammer fire, striker fire, and compact and full size. But it doesn't matter whether it's hammer fire, striker fire, CZ, Glock, C. I just want you to know they're in the same category. So this is something I consider uh, that you should have in the safe. And of course, most people will have a compact or full size handgun before they have a rifle um these are used for concealed carry home defense duty or whatever it may be i feel like you should have these two in the category i mean uh in your safe um i would suggest having a compact and a full size because you can get uh you have better range sessions with a full size because it's it's easy to shoot it's uh less recoil it's more accurate and all that good stuff now if i only was able to choose one of the two, whether it was full size or compact. And the, the compact version of the 17, for those who don't know, which most people do know, is the Glock 19. It's the compact version to this Glock 17. And then this is a compact PO7, and the full size version to this, for those who don't know, is the PO9, which I haven't added that to my collection yet, but that's on the list. So if I was only able to have or afford one or the other, in my opinion, I would go with this, even if this is something that I'm going to carry for EDC, I would go with a full size gun because I'm more accurate with it. It feels better in the hand. And I would, I always suggest shooting 
what you're most the most accurate with. And what I mean by that, if you if it's a big difference with your accuracy between this and a Glock 19, which the size is just a little bit smaller, and you shoot this way, way better than the Glock 19. And when I say you suck with the Glock 19, you must really suck to carry this over that because if the margin is just small, because of course I shoot this better than the 19, but the, the margin is so, so much, so small, I would carry the 19 over this, if you get what I'm saying. So if you just shoot absolutely a full size so much better than a compact gun, go with the full size and I'm gonna leave it at that. So these are these two are in the same category for as in pistols. I feel like you should have one or the other or both in your uh, gun safe. All right. Next, we're going to go to shotgun. It doesn't matter what shotgun. And this is mine. This is all clear. As you can see, it's nothing in the tube or in the chamber. All right. This is a Mossberg Mavic 88. This is one of the most simple and cheapest and reliable shotguns that's out there, which is a lot. Most shotguns are reliable. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Most of them are reliable. Um, when, when it comes to shotguns, you can find yourself spending a lot of money on shotguns. When it comes to pump actions, I feel like you should go the cheapest you can as far as in, when it comes to pump action, getting the cheapest and most reliable shotgun you can. Now, when you go to semi-automatic shotguns, you want to make sure you pay attention to the function and how reliable they are. And then the more reliable they are, the more money you may end up spending. And that is worth it because you're going into that semi-auto uh, automatic realm of the 12 gauge. So you might end up spending a little more money. And that's, that's, that's understandable. But when it comes to pump action, you really don't have to spend as much because pretty much all of the shotguns and when it comes to pump action are reliable. So you don't really have to spend that much money unless you spending that money for features, for as in furniture and stuff like that. This Maverick 88 did not come like this at all. This Maverick 88, it, uh, for the most part, you can probably find that for about 200 and 250 or less. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, you're gonna find it uh, cheaper than 200. It's mad poor furniture. Uh, the stock was the most expensive. I think I may have paid uh, $100 for it. The original price is a little more than that. It may be cheaper now. I had it for a while. And uh, then this handguard was maybe 45 or whatever. And it still brought the grand total of this gun a little under 400 bucks. Uh, and you can get the 590, which is the better version of this, the Mark Mossberg 590. And you're going to pay probably a little more than 400 bucks for it without this furniture. So that's just something to think about. Uh, I do have a weapon mounting light on here. This is an M4 full size weapon mounting light. I have the little uh shell holders on the side for extra shells or whatnot 12 gauge shells and this is very very uh underrated i will say with the proper training at the range and uh taking class shotgun classes which i would like i haven't took a shotgun classes but i did i do shoot it well i haven't shot it lately because they've kind of changed the rules uh with shotguns at my range but before they did that i used to shoot this shotgun a lot uh, i love it it's very very uh Underrated, like I said, is very, very useful as far as a home defense. Um, and people do use it for hunting or whatever. You can use it for hunting, but mine is pretty much for home defense. But with the right training, you can, this gun is, is very, very effective. Um, just get out there and find your range that allow you to train with it and uh, use it. I feel like everyone should have a shotgun in their, uh, in their uh, safe. It's very, very easy to use. You can teach anyone to use it. And, Pretty much everybody can shoot it. You may have to scale down the uh, the ammo and the loads that you're running in it to, to make it shootable for the average person. But, you know, shotguns, they you rarely miss with them, and they're very, very powerful and effective user. If you're in the woods, you got bears and all that good stuff, it can take down all that good stuff uh, close range. All right, we're going to go to semi-automatic rifle. Now, this is AR. Of course, I'm using AR for an example because it is america's rifle you know what i'm saying you can find parts pretty much anywhere online and locally for the average ar and also the rounds you know what i'm saying you can find the rounds for very very reasonable price and a lot of it but you can also have the ak in this category when it comes to comparable to what i'm talking about uh everyone should have a 16 inch rifle 
I feel like if you're going to uh, have some rifles in your safe, everyone should have a 16 inch rifle in their safe. I recommend an AR with 5.56. Five, that way you can shoot 223 in it as well. And this is my dang defense uh, DDM 4V7. Uh, this one is pretty much a multi purpose do it all setup, what I have, because I have a red dot close range all the way out to 150. Uh, 150 yards with the red dot alone that I can get it out to about three something three ish uh, with the three times magnifier that I have on here. So it can pretty much do it all uh, home defense. Just be mindful of you stay in an apartment or house or you got some acres and you got some people, you know, some neighbors will spread it out. You still have to be considerate of whether around is uh, traveling if you use it for home defense or whatnot. And like I said, you can use this pun. Uh, you can use it for close quarters, uh, but it's going to be kind of you know tight using it for uh, CQB or whatnot. But it can be done with the proper training. And um, that's it. I'm also going to show my SBR because, like I said, I'm putting it in the same category because I can get out to about 100 uh, yards with just the red. I mean, a little over 100. I'll say about between 150 and 200. With just this red dot alone with this 11.5 this is my 11.5 sbr bcm um uh, it's very very reliable and capable of going out but it's also great for close quarters it's short you know what i mean you can get it's great for home defense clearing rooms checking your house if you feel like you heard some bump off in the night or whatnot you can do it with the shotgun too as well and the 16 inch rifle i just feel like with the proper training and dry fire and walking through your house, going through, you know, knowing your corners and stuff like that, you will be effective. Um, like I said, this pretty much is in the same category, but if I can only have one, I will go with the 16 inch because you get more velocity, more range and all that good stuff out of it versus this, which is, this is still good. Uh, and me personally, personally, when it comes to uh, SBRs, me personally, uh, I wouldn't go under, uh, my my favorite is the 11.5. 10.5, yeah, but anything tr truly under 10.5 with 5.56 is a no-go. Uh, something shorter than a 10.5 and a 300 blackout, yeah, I, I, I would say that, that that'll work because it's been proven with the uh, round and it can do what it do as far as the distance and uh, close range, of course. But going under 10.5 with a 5.56, I don't suggest it. It's it's kind of a waste of time to me. Me personally, 11.5, that, that's where it's at for me for uh, when it comes to SBR 5.56. All right, and then we're going to go to this joint. This is my AR-10 chambered in 308 and also can shoot 7.62 by 51. Um, and this is a long range setup. This is for reaching out. This is for hunting. If you hunt, you know, I don't hunt, but this is for long range, reaching out. If you got property, you want to keep something at bay. This will keep them at bay without you having to get too close to whether it's a big bear or whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, or, you know, someone trying to hurt you and your family. You got property. You want to keep them back. This will do it. It will keep them at bay at distance without having to uh, engage in close range. And um, this is pretty much what this is for, long range. You know what I'm saying? Keep your stuff back. This is an 18-inch barrel. This is an AR uh, arrow precision uh, build I did. And um, that's it. It's primary arms, uh, 4 to uh, four to 14 uh, magnifier. And uh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And it's just some examples, something you can think about adding to as you're going through your journey. And like I said, this is only – Mine is, you know, showing two guns in the same category. It's only about four guns, and it's not bad. And that'll be something you set up for different purposes. You got one that can do all. If that's all you have at the time, you can set that up first when it comes to rifles. Uh, if you plan on getting a, doing an SBR, go ahead and get your 16-inch barrel uh, rifle first. Set it up where it can do pretty much everything, and then you can dedicate an SBR to do CQB type things, shotgun for whatever it may be, and then you got the AR-10 for long range. And then in this same category, you can put with this AR-10 because it's an 18-inch barrel, and I would say 18 inches up to 20 would be in the same category. You can have a bolt action gun. I do want a bolt action gun for very uh, super accuracy, but for right now, this AR-10 is what I have. 
and it's working fine for me. So it's just something to think about, something you can add to your collection. That's it, man. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Peace. Uncle Life. It's on you.